Hey Sparkle Squad, this is Monica and today I'm coming at you with another sponsored jewelry making tutorial from bbcraft.com and today I'm going to be making a stretchy bracelet using some of the previous supplies that I got from them in another haul but also incorporating some brand new supplies. Here you see this is a digital file that I just created for those that might be interested in it. This is a Christmas lighthouse file in a 3 4 inch or 18 millimeter size. I also have this in the 1 inch or 25 millimeter size, but I will be using those today in a nautical themed metal bookmark with the glass cabochons or cabochons or like I like to call them glass cabs. These are nautical themed bookmarks which would be wonderful stocking stuffers for Christmas or any anytime you need to give a little gift to someone. Teachers would love these types of things. A boat enthusiast, librarians, any bibliophile that loves to read. There's just so many different possibilities. Retirement gifts, these would be great. So I'll be using some of these acrylic beads that have the swirly patterns in the metallic swirls on them and mixing them with some of the white shell beads that I got previously from bbcraft.com as well as possibly some of these light pink glass pearls depending on the, the color mix, some of the stretch cord, and we'll be using some bead caps here for the beads that I'll be putting in the bracelet as well as making a little dream catcher pendant. So let's get started. Okay, so probably the easiest thing that we can do here to get started is the lighthouse bookmark. I have a blue, a kind of a green, and two different red lighthouses that I can choose from in the file that I created. Now you can either just cut these out with your scissors all the way around on the guideline that I have, or I have my little handy EK Success punch here. So now that I have my image, I can put this onto the little metallic bookmark that I have in this area here. This is a ship's steering wheel. Then you just put this onto your page in order to hold your spot, whatever you're, that you're reading. I need to be able to put my little lighthouse themed picture into that area. So I'm gonna use a little bit of glue. I like to use a post-it note so that I can put my image down without worrying that it's gonna get messed up and be able to get my sealer on there. The glass cab that I'm using, which is an 18 millimeter here, I'm just gonna be sure that I wipe this with a nice little cloth or paper towel, something that is non-oily. It's not dirty in any way. If you feel like you might have some kind of debris, this was in the bag itself, but because it was rubbing up against the glass, I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a wipe with a cloth. This art glitter glue is very good for your glass cabs in the way that there are no bubbles or any kind of streaks or those little shiny spots. You can use whatever you want. There's diamond glaze, E6000, but this is just a small little photo so I'm going to use this glitter glue. Um, Annie Howes also has a glue that's pretty good. So I'm going to get the bubble out here first just by running it like this and then coming right here in the center you don't very you don't need a whole lot and as a matter of fact a lot of this is going to go off to the side but I put this right on to my photo. It's going to move around on me. I just want to press this to get the air bubbles out and let the glue come all the way to the edge of the glass. Now if you have any toothpicks or some cotton swabs, you can come around there and clean that up before it, it dries. So I have my little cotton swab and I can hold this and just go around the edges if you have any extra glue that comes out. I only had just a little tiny bit. It doesn't take very long for this to dry either, which is another reason why I like it. And I just keep pushing this down until I don't see any little bubbles in the glass cab area. There we go. So we have that one. And it takes usually about 15 minutes for it to dry. Once it's dry, you'll be able to tell that it's no longer cloudy. 
If you use E6000 immediately to put your Cabochon to the photo, it will dry clear, but it does tend to get a little bit messy as far as just trying to get those bubbles out without having those little shiny spots. And sometimes no matter what you do, you have to redo it. The good thing about these types of glues are that they're water soluble. So you can put this into like a little cap of water if you mess it up. Maybe you've had to make something different and then you're able to reuse your glass caps. Okay, so if you have glued it to the paper and it has stuck, then you can just go ahead and use your scissors to cut around the image. Or, like me, it was just on a posty note or whatever surface you've got. Then once it's dried, you can pick it up. You're going to then put your glue onto your surface here and I just do a very little bit. You're going to get a fairly decent sized blurb of glue onto your either your toothpick or your piece of wire whatever you're using and then go in a circular motion and just spread it out like you would be spreading peanut butter on a piece of bread all the way to the edges of your piece so that when you put your photo on with the cabicon it is going to stay and Line your photo up to where you want it. Put it into your little space. Push it down. And then there you have it. You want something like this, where you don't have any of the glue popping up here around the edges. So what I would do is just wait and let this dry overnight. Let's go ahead and open up our package of beads. These beads are really cool because they have a metallic look to them and they're very bright and colorful. I love that. An added benefit for me is that they all come in this cool little case. So I can open this up and then look at all these cute little beads. There they are. These beads are an eight millimeter size. They come in all these different colors here. So let's see, I get two, four, six, eight, ten different colors, and you get 30 in each color. So they're very nice and bright. You, you can make a rainbow bracelet just strictly with these beads, or you can do what I'm going to do and mix them with some alternate beads. Now, because those are so colorful and they have a metallic accent, I'm going to use some of these white shell beads that I had gotten previously from bbcraft.com and just mixing them in with the colorful beads here and some bead caps. Now you can do this as a stretch bracelet. You can do this as a wired bracelet. These bead caps here come in a, in a handy little case. These have different sizes for different bead sizes that you may have. And this is actually from Panda Holly Elite, which is a vendor through BB Crafts. So when you open up your box, you have all these different sizes here. I've got really tiny ones for maybe like a four to six millimeter bead. And it goes on a eight and 10 millimeter size bead. Since I'm gonna be doing a stretchy bracelet, I'm not gonna to have to worry about a clasp or anything. Because I have 10 different colors of the beads over here, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do a rainbow style bracelet. For stretch cord, this is just a regular 0.7 millimeter thickness, which is about standard. It's not quite one millimeter. So it will pretty much fill up your standard bead holes. And that's what you want in order to um, not have too much wiggle around in whatever beads that you're using. So I'm just gonna lay out a pattern here. I'm gonna mix it together with some of these bead caps and some of these acrylic beads in with these white shells. be overpowering my beads here so I'm going to use this smaller it's like a six to eight millimeter style size which looks like it's going to work perfectly for what I want to do as I was putting in my little bead caps it moved my beads down in the design so you can see I've got a seven inch bead board right here but because this is a stretchy bracelet I'm gonna do eight inches so that I have a little bit of wiggle room and the band is not just right on top of my wrist as far as the design here because I have the acrylic bead here and then I'm altering alternating it with the white shell beads I've got a white shell bead here so right here at this point if I wanted to 
because I've got acrylic shell, acrylic shell, and then I'm all the way down here at shell. When I go to tie this together, the shell and the acrylic will meet. However, that will only be a seven inch bracelet. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit more wiggle room. So I'm continuing the, the design up here. That should then give me about a seven and a quarter to eight inch bracelet. I'm gonna give myself two inches of wiggle room on either side of the bracelet, just as, it, as though I would making a wired bracelet. However, this is a stretch cord. So if I'm wanting to have an eight inch bracelet, an extra four inches of cord would mean I need 12 inches of cord. So here's my ruler. I have 12 inches and I'm gonna cut that. Either you can use your flush cutter, your regular cutter, or just a pair of scissors. When you're working with stretch cord, you don't really need any special jewelry making tools. Now you just start stringing on your beads. When you put these on the string, you're not doing anything special you do want to be sure that the cord that you're using is not going to be too large or too small for the beads that you're using. So whatever the smallest bead in your design is, that is as small of a cord as you'd want to go as far as the bead hole. I'm just feeding these on. If you want to use a bead mat so your beads don't roll out all over the place, that's fine. If you want to use a bead stopper, you can do that as well. I think they call them bead buddies or if you have a binder clip just a small little binder clip grab hold of the other side of your wi your wire or your cord whatever the stringing material is that you're using clip it just don't strip it <laughs> clip it don't strip it so here are all of my little beads because I gave myself that wiggle room here with the two inches on either side I have enough to be able to tie my knots and not worry that my beads are going to come off or I'm not going to have enough room. But what I was talking about earlier is to make sure, especially since I'm doing like every other bead, to make sure that I don't end with two white beads here on the end unless that's the design I'm going for. In other words, that that would be the front of my, my design. So since I'm alternating beads with bead caps here, I wanted to end with an acrylic and a shell bead. This is gonna be the back of my design since I'm tying the knot here at this point. If you had a specific bead that you wanted to have like as a focal, like you would a watch face or something, then you would want to make sure that you position that here in this area so that you're not tying the knot wherever that focal bead would be. Just do a regular overhand knot at first to bring the bracelet together. I'm pulling the slack out so that I don't have anything, any gaps in between there. I want to tie just another regular overhand knot. And when I do that, I just continue to lightly, not, not tugging it, but lightly pull the slack out so that it tightens that knot right here. Now, I always do a second knot, and this is where I use the glue. So the glue that I use is E6000, and I will use a toothpick and just um, dip it into the glue, and typically I'll use like a little posty note like I did before on the, the photo project that we were doing. Just dip the toothpick into the glue. Put a little dot of glue right here on the first knot that you tied. Then tie your second knot, and this time around, it's gonna be a surgeon's knot or square knot, depending on which way you want, to, you want to refer to it as. So again, just overhand, but instead of tying it right here, you're gonna loop it a second time through, up, over, and through to where you have what looks like a square, and then you're just gonna pull that, just like you did the first knot, and you don't yank it, you're just pulling this to where you get all the slack out. With this E6000 glue here, all you've got to do is open it up. And if you have the tube that has the precision tips, that would be a good one to use. Otherwise, put out a blurb onto a post-it note or scrap piece of paper, whatever you might have. And you can use a toothpick or in my case, a piece of wire or maybe a paper clip if you have. That's what I've done. I've converted a, a paper clip here. If you're like me and you do some wire wrapping, you might have some little wire bits that you might want to use. Just dip the tip into the glue to get just a very little bit 
onto the tip. Then as you start to pull down, you're going to stop at a certain point. Dip into your glue with either your toothpick, your piece of wire, your paper clip, whatever you have. And then just come right in here and on the top of the first knot, put a little bit of glue and then finish pulling your strings for the second knot and that just sandwiches the glue dot in between the two knots and the glue this E6000 being that it's an industrial strength glue it will actually bind itself to the stretch cord which is even a more secure feature so at this point you can either leave the tails on while it dries overnight or you can go ahead and use your cutter to cut off the tails and then leave it to dry overnight. So just cut off your little tails being sure that you're not cutting into the knot. And again if the holes in my beads were large enough that I could go ahead and pull the knot and into the bead to hide it then I would just come over one bead and pull that stretch cord until it popped into the bead here to hide that knot otherwise I'm not going to worry about it and this is just a teeny tiny little example since I wasn't able to show you on the main bracelet here what I was talking about since I didn't have a toothpick or anything at that point I just wanted to show you here so this knot is really big in this little teeny tiny baby example I guess we could call this a thumb ring you know just put this on yeah for <laughs> these dream catchers you will use a bent nose plier whatever your chain nose plier whatever you're more comfortable with in order to open and close what are called jump rings they're just a single piece of metal that opens in the middle so I usually hold the left side with my chain nose pliers and I do the movement or the opening and closing with my right hand which is where I'm using the bent nose pliers which looks like a crooked finger so I'm going to push this away from myself like I'm opening a door in order to open this okay you don't want to open it side to side like a u-shape because then that makes it weak and can break so just attach these to the loops in the dream catchers and then pull this towards myself in order to close maybe give it a little squeeze if you feel like it didn't meet all the way sometimes it'll click I'm just going to do that for all three now you can do smaller jump rings these are a six millimeter size jump ring they have four millimeters which are small you can also make your own jump rings if you want to do a smaller Piece. You can attach this to either an earring or you can put this as a pendant on a necklace I would even add some additional dangles with some beads to make make it colorful for this smaller one I'm just going to get a few of the jump rings that I was doing before in the six millimeter size if you want to go down a size you could go to the four millimeter different dream catcher pendants I can use these as really big earrings or pendants for a necklace let me grab an ear wire here this is just a regular fish hook and it has a loop here on the bottom turn this upside down to where you can hold the little ball down towards your fingernail and see you can tell which side is going to be open it's going to be the right hand side on this particular ear wire some of them are different some will open on the left some will open on the right I'm going to pull it up towards myself so that it's opened up now and I could put the smaller one onto the ear wire and then just push it down away from myself to close the ear wire loop and voila I have a dream catcher earring and then for the other option here I can just use a larger jump ring open this up like I did the smaller ones to put on the feathers grab hold of the dream catcher and then attach this to some cord or a piece of ribbon 
So in my case, I'm just going to use some regular cord I have, which has already got a lobster clasp and a chain extension on it for a necklace. So I can just put my dream catcher onto the necklace. Now, because I want the dream catcher to face a certain way, I'm going to need to think about who has this necklace if you're right-handed. You want your lobster clasp to be in your right hand as you're putting this around your neck, which means there's my clasp on the right. I want the front of my dream catcher to be facing outwards in the right direction. So both of these sides look the same. There's nothing any different about how the dream catcher looks. So close the door. If you wanted to, you could still use that smaller six millimeter size jump ring. I chose to use the larger one. This is a nine millimeter size. And now I have a necklace and an earring in the dream catcher. This particular kit comes with 80 pieces. You get 20 pieces of each style. You can make 20 of each pendant and 20 of each of the smaller ones. So then you can use these to do some beaded dangles in addition to the feather charms or you can just leave it as is with the metal. You can also use some different colors of thread or floss to go and weave throughout your web pattern here if you wanted to make that a little bit more three-dimensional and colorful. I hope you've enjoyed today's jewelry making tutorial. If this has inspired you to create something for your holiday season such as some awesome sparkly stocking stuffers or just a gift for yourself then please let me know in the comments what was your favorite of the projects that I did. Thanks again to my sponsor today, bbcraft.com. They do have a lot of jewelry making supplies and other crafts for those that are interested in giving them a shot. So please check out bbcraft.com. And as always, have a sparklerific day, y'all. Bye!